Welcome to the Analytics for Humans podcast, where we make analytics simple for everyone. The Analytics for Humans podcast is sponsored, produced, and created by the team over at ClearQuery, where we're on a mission to democratize data analytics. My name is Mary Ellen, and I'm joined today by Maggie Wiseman, who is one of our software engineers. Maggie, can you briefly introduce yourself and tell us about your background? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Maggie Wiseman, and I'm a software engineer, like you said, at Night Shift Development. I didn't start out as a software engineer. I have a degree in chemistry, and then I was a teacher for many years before transitioning to software engineer. So I've only been in this field for about seven years, and I really haven't been working in data analytics very long, um, but I've certainly interacted with each of the pieces of the craft that's along the way. And of course, now that I work on ClearQuery, I basically work in it every single day. Very cool. For our listeners who might not be familiar, can you explain what data and analytics entail in simple terms for like me to understand? I think about it is that it's like the scientific method for business. And I didn't know if everybody is super comfortable with scientific methods. So let's do a quick review. You have a problem or you have a question and then you have to do a thing. Maybe you do some background research, but you come up with a hypothesis. You say, if this, then that, and then pick some variables. You design an experiment that go do that experiment. You collect the data. You usually might plot it on a graph or something. And then you, you write up a little conclusion about what you fit up with the analysis showed you. And really business analytics or data analytics, I'm sorry, is the same thing, except that it's really the raw materials of the experiment are completely different. If you are in a chemistry lab, for example, you're doing experiment test tubes, and early water flasks, chemicals and stuff like that. Those are like the raw materials of your experiment. But with data analytics, your raw materials, the data, actually the data that's coming in from all these different sources. When we do science experiments, we're very specific about what data we're collecting. If you were, for example, doing uh, an experiment with gas, I might as in, I was an eighth and ninth grade teacher, I might have said, let's do some experiment on gas. And I might have said, okay, you know that pressure and volume and temperature all affect a gas. So how do we just look at two of those variables? We have to control one of them, right? So you have to keep one of them constant. So uh, that's relatively easy to do. I, sh I shouldn't say easy to do. I'm glad. So it's like a book that I wanted to If you think so. But with big data, with data analytics, the whole of the data that's coming in, it's not like you, there's an experimenter going out there and saying, and doing things to get the data. Instead, it's just like us every day clicking on things. It's using our machine. It's turning on light, it's driving, whatever. So there's all this really messy, lot, tons and tons of data. The experiment then becomes the, the big, the hard part of data analytics, I think, is actually how do I process this data to get something useful? Does that make sense? Yeah. So what drew you into changing your career into data analytics <laughs> was in software well, yeah so in software engineering i really just man that's like a big question <laughs> sorry yeah that's off why did i change my career i so as a as a chemistry teacher as a teacher i really was interested in doing changing things and seeing how they would how it affected the outcome of student learning and I felt like I, that had run its course and I really wanted to learn new things in a different arena and just really grow as a person and just experience a different lifestyle and, and see how I did business rather than education. Yeah, that's what I changed to software engineering. And I really do thinking about how uh, people interact with software and how what I build to either facilitate their working with it that's the goal, really, is to make it so that it's easy to work with it rather than it being confusing or difficult. And anyway, this product is particularly fun to work on because I think that it's very challenging to understand data analytics if you're not coming from an analytical background. Like, it's just a mystery. What even is it? What is it? Mm -hmm. And really, it's so there's an example I, I read about recently. And this woman, we have all heard of Florence Nightingale. Have you heard of Florence Nightingale? Yeah. Like a famous nurse. From mm -hmm. the and she is so famous because she is, she was a strong advocate for sanitary reforms in hospital in the 1850s. They really didn't, germ theory was like a thing, but I don't think people were really good about keeping 
hospitals. So she was tasked with going to Crimea, to the guild hospitals in the Crimean War. Or I don't know if I said that properly. And the hospitals were approaching. They were like, people were lying in their own excrement. They were pus. They were completely disgusting. And people were dying. And she came in there and she, like they were running out of soap. I think they were running out of water in some cases or clean water in some cases. So she came in there and she got some brushes and she probably got soap and she got all the patients who were at least could stand up and move to clean the hospital from top to bottom. And the whole time she was taking data, like how many people were dying and what were they dying of? And then as the years went on, she continued to do that. She continued to institute more reform. She started a laundry. Can you believe they didn't have a laundry and a clean sheet? Yeah, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, for, um, yeah, so she's advocating for people, I guess, you know, how important that was. And so she was taking data this whole time. And then she knew that sanitary reforms like that were super important. So she went home. She was like, I need to get this message out that we need to clean up the hospital. And so what she did is she was somebody who's just like amazing analytical type person. She had been keeping all this data and she knew that she needed to present it in a way that would be really meaningful for people and that would really, it, people would be able to understand it without actually, uh, really having to look at the table. I don't know if you looked at an Excel table. I look at Excel tables all the time. Sometimes you can draw meaning from them, but sometimes it's just like black and white. Like, yeah. It's right. For real. Yeah. yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah, so she knew the same thing. And so what she did is she actually hooked up with a, um, a writer, like a social justice writer at the time who wasn't, I don't know, wasn't somebody that worked for the government, was somebody who knew how to reach the people on an emotional level. And she re-displayed her data in, in this really famous way called the, I, don't know, like, I think it's called the Nightingale Rose Diagram or something. I don't know if there's show notes here, but maybe we could link it in, in show notes. Yeah, because yeah, because you can see it's like really easy to see how the number of deaths decrease once she has instituted these sanitary forms. And so people look at that. They look at the, the background and they're like, oh my gosh, look how many people are dying of things that aren't battle, that are dying of things like cholera and typhoid, things that are totally prevented. And so it had a huge impact um, on military hospital reform. She was actually invited to advise every time uh, for various countries on their, on how to treat their soldiers when they were wounded. And so I think that's a really good example of data analytics because it's like somebody with have home data and it's, I have insights here. I need to share the value of this data with people. And the way that I do that is I transform it into a visualization, get it out there in a way that it's really motivating for other people to, yeah, to create change and do something different. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's the big, big takeaway. Yeah, that was a great story. That's the thing that coming from not a data and analytics background myself, being able to see a vis- visualization of all the things I know, but being able to visually see it and show it to other people, that has been the really cool thing for me working with Clear Query and working with very technical people, being a non-technical person, being able to speak not the same language, obviously, because I'm not technical, but we can come to an understanding of each other and I can understand what they're saying through the dashboards, visualizations, charts, and all of that stuff that they're able to show me in the product, which is super cool and creates action. It isn't just information that you see and you're like not able to really you see what you're reading and you understand, but you don't understand it the same way as if it's put in front of you in a chart of some sort or a table that's more visually, I don't know. It's just so much easier. So I, that's an awesome story. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, I remember that we were talking about like why it transitioned into a why. Yeah. I work on ClickQuery. Yeah. It's because if we can make it possible for people to use their data in a way that they can get information out of it, get insight out of it, and, and perform things that are useful and helpful. There's just so many questions you have about, okay, so for example, <laughs> my dad has, it's ill and we were at the hospital and it's just, you have all these questions when you go through the healthcare process. And I am hoping that people are collecting all of this data and using all of this data and will be able to answer questions like, how do we get people through this? What 
what is the most efficient way to get people through this process? How do we make sure that the outcomes are really good? What are the decisions we need to make? Or how can we see what variables actually are? How well someone does in the healthcare. I'm sure healthcare companies have big analytics teams that are working on this, but it's still the same idea. Even smaller businesses, government organizations, nonprofits, maybe they're smaller groups and they have data, but they don't have a way of processing and getting information out of it. And I think that's what makes their course. It's so simple to just upload data and just on the fly get those kind of charts and visualizations. And then to filter your data, clean your data a little bit, and focus on what you really care about. And then we will on the fly do the statistical analysis for you and make it something that you can actually use right away. Yep, that's awesome. That was my next question is, how does understanding data and analytics benefit a non-technical person in their daily lives? What you just told me. (laughs) There's also all the ways that you see it. I think there's two things three things probably in your career. Even if you're not a technical person, I'm sure like you're in charge of the stuff. Do you get data? Like we probably use tools. Like I don't know what kind of tools you use, but. Yeah, for sure. Yes. And I'll worry you. Yeah. Yeah. And so understanding a little bit, I think helps you be more analytical and approach problems maybe in a different way that can be helpful. I think of it like it's just a mindset shift where you're like, instead of thinking of this, like my gut or my emotions, just thinking in a different way can be really helpful. Yeah, it can help you blend feeling like going with your gut and seeing if it works. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the book yeah. yeah. blend too is a really powerful. Yeah. I think it's also very powerful when you, especially if you're working in a team, if you can bring an argument, an analytical argument to the table, you're like, we're doing this, this is working, this isn't working. What can right. we do better? It, yeah. it creates yeah. action and it creates collaboration between people to move forward and try something different or go with what they're doing because it's working or, yeah, yeah. it's a mix and balance for sure. With stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What are some tools or resources that you can recommend for beginners who want to start learning more about data and analytics? Yeah, so I really enjoyed a book called Keeping Up with the Quant your guide to understanding and using analytics. I'd say just whatever modality you prefer, like maybe it's providing a YouTube channel or something, because I know there's lots of people out there who probably have video or whatever, but I really found this book extremely well organized and well written. It's super fun to read. So that is the research that I would recommend for sure. Keeping Up With The Quant by Thomas Davenport and Jen How Kim. And then depending on if you're, that's a beginner. That's really good, especially if you're somebody who's want to use analytics for your job and you just don't even know where to begin because the book has really great advice, I think, on that. Um, But if you're somebody that wants to get into the technical point of it, I think starting with a foundation in foundations of software engineering are really helpful. There's a class, it depends on where you are in your journey. If you're still a young person and in college, you can probably figure out where to do that in your school. But if you're somebody like me that was a career transitioner, I used a lot of online education courses. Coursera, I think, has this one that's called DF50. It's taught by Harvey. It's taught, I think it's taught at Harvard. And the professor is excellent. And the, the point of it is just that it's like the fundamental of how computers work, like memory allocation, testing five, which is a lot of what you do in data analytics as a software engineer. It's just helping people get their data out so that it's in a useful form and not as awesome using just like the basics of cons- cons- uh, computer science. So that's all the reasons. CS50 and keeping up with the quants. Okay, cool. Yeah. For someone that's aspiring to enter the field of software engineering with focusing on data, what advice would you give? Yeah, similar advice. I would say, I think the best thing to do is really start with the basics. No, you're not. <laughs> Take a statistics course. And again, yeah, do the kind of understand, you know, how computer, it's not really how computer, well, maybe it's how computer, yeah, how computers work. Instructions, do the basics and it will come. I don't think that somebody needs to like I don't know, jump into anything advanced or programming or whatever right off the bat. Cool. Well, thank you so much for taking time and 
talking about your background and talking about data and analytics and giving some real life examples on how it all works and how it can promote change and empower people to understand what's happening around them and do more, do better, create change themselves. I really appreciate it. This was the Analytics for Humans podcast. We're sponsored by ClearQuery, a solution that makes data analytics simple for anyone. If you've got data, ClearQuery makes it easy for you to get valuable insights out of it in no time with no deep technical skills or training required. If you're interested in learning more, check out ClearQuery at clearquery.io where you can sign up for a free tier and get started today.